Hi everyone, Snowflake Dan here with you. Today we're going to be covering over how to connect our local Jupyter Notebook with our Snowflake account so that we can query data from our Snowflake account. So let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice on the screen is a tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to be linked in the description and we're going to use it to follow along uh, during our process. So the first thing we'll want to do is install Jupyter Notebook. Uh, the way I found this to be the easiest is via VS Code. Today's example, I'm going to be using what's known as GitHub Code Spaces with VS Code to be able to run our notebook. So again, the first thing we'll want to do is actually download our notebook. From there, we'll want to set up our Snowflake account. So I have nothing in my Snowflake account, so I'm going to create the databases and the warehouse. So we'll copy that code. We'll go back to our databases. We'll click on Projects, and we'll start a new worksheet. From here, we'll paste in that code, we'll select it all, and then run it. Great, so we've created a database called raw, a schema called Jupyter, and a warehouse called development. So if we wanted to see that, I could refresh here, go to raw, and see I've got a schema here called Jupyter. So now I wanna put some data inside of that uh, Jupyter schema. We'll head back to the Snowflake account, close that tab, and we'll copy the next portion of code, which is to create a table of XY with some XY values. Let's go back to our worksheet. We'll go down a few lines. We'll paste it in there and we'll select it and hit run. And so now if I refresh the left hand side menu, we'll notice we have a table now called XY and we have 10 rows in there with X and Y columns. Great. So now we'll want to start our Jupyter notebook setup process. So the first kind of warning I have here is that if you are using MFA uh, or multi-factor authentication, you'll want to enable MFA caching because every single time you run a cell inside that notebook, what will happen is it'll ping you for connection authentication every single time you run it and you have to authenticate it. So Snowflake has made this easier. We could just cache that token to, so that it persists while we're running it. So then from there, what we'll want to do is actually get our account identifier. Our account identifier is basically an identification code that allows us uh, to put in a username and password along with it so that we can connect to our Snowflake account. So here we'll go back to our Snowflake account. We'll go to the bottom left hand corner. We'll hover over our account. We'll hover over it again and we'll want to copy our account identifier. Now there's something tricky with this one. We want to we want to trade out the uh, dot with a dash. So if I go a few lines down here, I'll show you what I mean. So here we've got the organization name and then the account name. Again, in Snowflake, you could have multiple accounts under one organization. Yours might look a little bit different or generated. Uh, this is just because I've created mine. So what we want to do is actually switch the dot with a dash, and this will allow our Jupyter Notebook to connect to it. Great, so if we go to the next step, it asks us to update that account identifier and a username and a password. So we'll switch over to GitHub Code Spaces. I've already got my notebook kind of set up here. So the first thing we'll wanna do is update that account identifier. Next, we'll wanna put in our user credentials. I'm gonna put mine in. Then I'll put in my password. Now this is a simple password that's gonna change. So it's just an example. And then the warehouse. And so at the beginning, we created a warehouse and we called it development. So I'll update it there and then we should be good to go. So I'll head back to the tutorial and we'll notice it'll tell us to run the notebook. So I'll go back and then I'll run my notebook. So I'll click run all. So the first thing it's going to do is pip install the needed packages. The next thing it'll do is set up, it'll, it'll authenticate, excuse me. Then it's going to query some data from that X and Y table we created and then print that uh, data frame out to us in the page. So that's great. So now if you do have any issues with this during the tutorial, we do have some troubleshooting steps for the local notebook, the code hub, GitHub code spaces one is pretty set up because it's already got Python installed, but yours might not. 
So feel free to use the troubleshooting steps that are shown in the tutorial. So this has been connecting your Jupyter Notebook to Snowflake and querying data. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.